and welcome back firewood addicts to another episode of travis does firewood today we will continue to get rid of all these cedar chunks here up on top of the hill and bring them downhill let's do it so as you saw in a previous episode if you've been seeing that one it's right here uh, my cedar guy dropped off a uh, big dump trailer full of cedar chunks. So these are off cuts from his mill um, He uses the cedar logs to make uh, statues the carvings and stuff like that <coughs> and um, Whatever he has left over off cuts cookies Pieces that have too many knots in them pieces that are rotted Sometimes he brings me logs that are punky and whatever he doesn't want in the jar that are in the way um, He brings over and dumps at, at uh, my place. I process it. I cut it I split it up and store it, and um, as I saw in this in, in uh, last month of January, I made a killing on selling ICB totes of cedar chunks that were dry. Um, it was the best month I've ever had in selling firewood, and I don't sell bulk firewood usually. I have a few customers who I sell uh, cords of wood to and they're grandfathered in, but usually I sell uh, wood at, at my firewood stand bundles rocks of wood and but bundles of kindling um, for the the cedar chunks it was one icb tote worth of chunks a, 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 a lucy thrown in and heaped which i'm going to say is between one fourth and one third of a cord and i sell that for 90 dollars plus delivery fee so um i i before right before he dropped this off i had no more dry cedar chunks so it was a blessing that he came by so I've been chipping away at this. You saw in the previous episode me start the process. So right now I'm in, in it where I'm gonna have a few pieces up in here. Let's turn, turn you this way. A, a few pieces right here that I need to either cut down to 16s because it's too long, or they have knots in them and it's just too much work to just put them with the 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 axe. Um, so I'm debating on bringing the splitter up here or bring the wood down and then the hill um to to split and, and and cut further but for the most part a lot of it is clear so using the axe because i have, have a have a pile of cedar chunks right here that i need to put we're going to put them in uh the garbage cans full put them in the Kubota trailer and and i bring them down to the backyard and put them in the bins um, so, to, so, so, to, to, so to, 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 to continue that process, um, we're going to be mostly using the axes, just a hand split. But you tell me, those of you who split with a, a single wedge on a, a big box or splitter, and those of you that use an axe, um, or you do both, which one do you find faster? If the wood wants to work with you, and, and the wood is good enough to split, is it all knotty and gross and all twisted and, and stuff? If the wood is pretty much clear and straight grain, what do you like or what's your 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 preference? Or a preference of if you have a if you have time, what do you go to? Or if you don't have time and you want to get it done done as fast as possible, what do you go to? Either your single wedge big box splitter or your axe. I would love to know down in the comments below. So as you can see, possibly some of these pieces these rounds are massive so that one i may be able to put on end and split away it's let's see let's, let's check it out with the tape measure it's at just at 16 so i'll use this for my regular wood um yeah because i have i have chunk wood here and then this wood here is at 16 so that's in piles and i'll put that in a separate spot and to, to dry out the cell at my firewood stand. A lot of this still is just chunks. Um, like this piece here um, is at 14. I'll probably put that in the chunks. Though that's chunk, it'll be chunked up, that'll be chunked up. But this massive round that you saw in the last episode, um, we're at, um, let's see if I can get this. We're at 20, 22, 23 ish. So I want my wood that I sell at, 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 at at my firewood stand to be as uniform as possible at 16. So it looks professional, look quality. It it looks look, look like like it's quality um, grade. 
So I think what I'll do with this stump is to noodle it across and split it so it have two halves and from there have the flat surface be on end <clears throat> and then I'll take the the chainsaw and cut this to 16 leaving one 16 piece and one cookie so I think that will be the plan of attack so I may need to bring some tools up to the hill which is fine but a lot of this here will be processed um, here on the tarp now what I'm doing is like these small pieces like this piece here this piece here this piece here this piece here these are smaller pieces that I don't like to include in um, the ICP tote of cedar chunks. I want the ICP, uh, I would like the the uh, tote chunks to be about like handful size, or what you could kind of hold on to with one hand, more or less. That would look like a log to kind of mix into the your your wood stove or your fireplace. This stuff here. I'm going to store separately and sell this as small pieces of kindling. Uh, I mentioned that in the previous video. So th this could like hand sized pieces, but then there's like a bunch of this stuff. And I don't know what to do with this stuff. I, I'm tempted to store it for myself, but is that worth it? Like this p tiny piece of cedar, is it worth collecting, storing? and then putting in a bucket and using it for, for kindling in my own wood stove. I'm almost tempted just to toss it and put it in the compost bin. But you let me know in the comments what will you do. So uh, let's get on to splitting.
what was once a pile of cedar chunks and logs and rounds is now a debris of sawdust and smaller chunks to be i don't know what i'm doing with this i don't know whether like these small pieces here i don't know to keep them for my own cedar or just toss them in the compost i don't know um but the sawdust i'll obviously toss but yeah it's it's time to wrap up the this job um it's been a few days since well i got this drop when my son was in the hospital so it's been down here for a while therefore i can't drive my truck down the hill to my backyard uh anymore until this is cleaned up so if i need to get the, get the backyard i'll have to drive the truck to the front of the house and down the hill which is not that big of a deal but um yeah you saw the pink way um a few times uh this episode uh cutting up um some of the the logs or the rounds and then using it um as a a pre some sort of like a like a noodle um dent to get my my wedge in there to be uh pounded out with a with um a small sledge so um and i do that to save on my chain and my bar give the little body a little workout because because that type of workout is similar to splitting wood with an axe you're using a sledgehammer or a mull so and that seems to work in most cases i used to saw, saw like i showed in the the other episode when i did the 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 these fitting wedges uh here um i do that to save on my chain to work work with the body a little bit and that seems to work with most rounds i mean granted this is cedar it's really easy to work with but uh may not work with like a knotty round or like maybe oak perhaps but anyway so using the champion a little bit today i hope that you did not get too dizzy having to fast forward but i'm sure that you jammed out a little bit to the rock around music in the background so um this is all split at 16 and i am done splitting this some the little, 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 little chunks so let me show you where i've been storing and stacking all this stuff um if you're interested but i'll show you anyway <clears throat> so this section here is cedar this is various types of cedar it started off with the cedar that i got for arborist paul which i think was like yellow cedar then I added some more cedar to it I took some out to sell because it was dry per the moisture meter and I just topped it off. I topped it off this from the halfway. This is stuff that I just processed um, the last few days and then I shed a little bit more in here. So I need to fix this tarp in the background, but there should be enough airflow in here to dry the cedar. Now I put the cedar back in here because this whole length of shelter isn't very good for drying wood as I found out in years past because it had this massive canopy and when it starts to get spring all the leaves come back and this just in here dark there's no sunlight in here this is why the ground is all mush um so I would like to trim back some of these branches not the trees but the branches but I do like the privacy that I get from the trees in the spring and summertime from the people who my neighbors who live behind me so a trade-off the other wood so once that's full okay i don't know where else to put it so um i had some cedar that i was um selling and using for my firewood stand um before it was in this front location here so i took the rest out put it and in, in the rack and now this is empty so now this front face will be um again cedar however high it will need to be um that load so that load in that trailer will go here it'll probably be up to like halfway on the pallet or, or one pallet height of uh, four feet so that is the 16 inches now the chunks whew, we got a lot of chunks which is good which is good because i can definitely um, use it. Oh, we got the hemlock fell down. I don't know if you can see that now with the light with the sun, but my rack of hem the hemlock that is right here that's collapsed. So I need to fix that. Bummer. My little makeshift wall that I had that separated 
the hemlock that was for bundle wood versus rack wood. Since the rack wood is now depleted, and I still got a few rows of the uh, bundle wood or the hemlock, the weight of it just kind of shifted. So, I, yeah, I'll address that. But anyway, this is one um, section of, of of the cedar that's full up here. So again, what I did is I was kind of like those um, like bulk totes of like rice or cereal that you get at the, at a local co-op or shopping. Um, um, at the at the local grocery store, perhaps, where you have it's gravity fed. So when this is dry, I'll take from the bottom, and then once the bottom is down, from the top will come down. A big because of of gravity. It has switched because of the sun. Um, so that's one full section, and then I have one section here which is almost full. So I have two here which I don't know how many ICB totes that would hold. I'm guessing at least four, two of each. So if I'm selling it for 90 times four, and I did it for, I don't know, several hours between on and off for several days, um, that's not bad. And then delivery on top of that, because if I'm going to um, sell in bulk wood, it's gonna be delivered. So I make my money that way too on delivery. I, I won't, I, I've had too many people wanting to pick up and, and load one, one tote of whatever wood and they ghost me. They're a no show. So I, it's fine people not coming to the firewood stand because it's open 24 seven, but I don't want to leave a tote of firewood at the top of my driveway because it make it wet, wet. No, 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 no one's going to steal a tote of firewood. Uh, if they do that maybe one or two pieces, but it's just it rains a lot here I have it covered and then I don't have a buyer then when if I have to deliver it myself having to load it again From the tote on the ground into my truck. It's just a pain. So any any bulk wood that I do sell is all delivered so I've had I have two of these here. So that's that um, So and that's That's a cedar um, not not a bad haul. Um, I need to contact my cedar guy to see if there's any more. Cause sometimes he has like a one like a, he, it, it, when he comes, it's usually not only one trailer load worth of wood that he has. It's usually uh, more than one, maybe up to three. So maybe he has more. I don't know. And. Um, but I do have the room to store it. Now, this is stuff that I sold my last final, final one the other day of Cedar Chunks. This was kind of left out of the rain a little bit. And then I have this entire section here that I could fill up. Um, and then in theory, in theory, I have this cage that I could fill up. So I, I can make room for more Cedar Chunks, but I, I definitely have enough at the moment it will won't won't take too long to um the season because it's it's cedar oh hey remember that two cords of wood that i bought an episode right here um yeah sometimes you have to buy wood to make money to flip it so you buy wood and you flip it sorry the neighbor kid is is uh, freaking out behind me um I don't mind him yeah but that was here I had it tarped down and they backed in with the with the big trailer and they dumped two plus cords of wood. And I, I think I think you saw me last time. I had resplit everything and then all I had left was stacks of the bundle wood that was here. So let's check out where I stacked it. Alright, so this is where I stacked it and when the wood is in a truck or a trailer and stacked and you know the dimensions of the trailer or truck whatever vehicle that it's stacked in I trust that a measurement as opposed to Lulu Lucy tossed you don't know what you're getting so um, it's so this front face here this is my bundle wood and then in the middle row which you can't see 
middle row, which is right here, is for rack wood. And right here is my bonfire wood, right here. So the, the bonfire wood, oh, that's all. I need to address the roof on this. Um, definitely not, not very good. Anyway, but this side, this other side, this inside, uh, facing the house side, this is all my bonfire wood. And these, as you can see, these are bigger chunks. These are for what you, what you would use for like a boiler, if you have a boiler in your area or, or or have one for your home. But most of these, yes, they're, they're big, but they're not at 16. They're like at, like at 10 or 12, 14. That's not 16 inches long. So anything that was short, I put in this back row so it's all separated. So when I am loading the firewood stand, I pick from those rows and it should be good. Now granted, if I need a rack and it's in the middle, that may be difficult. So I may need to pick from the bundle wood first to get to the rack and I should have another rack wood available in the wood yard. But that's, it's it, it, it when I'm making, when I'm trying to refill the firewood stand, um, to have the wood be separated like that, it makes sense to me because because usually when I'm doing so, I'm in a rush. So I hope that that um, will work out. But I ran out of room. I ran out of room, and I need I didn't want to go too high. So what I ended up doing was I put the balance of the bundle wood in where the bundler is. So this is my bundler right here, homemade from scrap lumber from pallets, and this back row here is all bundle wood that needs to dry a little bit more it's not fresh split it's not fresh cut this stuff has been split for a while but it's on the cusp of being seasoned so when we have, we have we have good airflow here when this is good to go give it maybe a month maybe two or so i'll test it and then i'll go directly from the pile to the bundler Super easy, uh, um, should be fast, and this is mixed, so I should be fine there. What I usually am doing is throughout the wood yard in my various piles, I'll get one wheelbarrow load of a certain species, and then I'll put it in piles here. One, one here, and one here, one here. So for example, this is all cedar, this is all stuff for like branches and stuff, and this is, I think, hemlock. And you're thinking to yourself, Travis, you're touching your firewood way too much. And I agree, but I can't find a more efficient way of um, making my firewood bundles. I, since I, I stack, I usually stack my wood um, in sections per wood species and timing. So I know when more or less it all will season at the same time. And then when I make my bundles, I'll put like two to four of each species, each kind in the bundle. So I have a mixed wood bundle and not just all one species because I have multiple species of wood in my wood yard. So, and so when I go to make my bundles, I collect, like I just said, and put them here uh, to be pre-positioned and then I put them in my bundler. So if you can think of a different way that would be more uh, efficient uh, and effective, you let me know because right now, I agree, I am, I am handling my wood way too much. All right, so I hope the update was um, informative and, and helpful. Um, I guess after the cedar, I still need to get rid of this spruce and pine um, in here. It's just been here way too long. I think it was in October that I got this. And that's the thing, when you get wood in your wood yard, make the time, process it. Get off the ground get it drying and i'm guilty of that this has been here for several months and i got it mostly bucked up it's mostly in rounds on all you gotta do is just split it uh some of the some of the rounds are fine with with my axe others are gonna need the champion splitter which is fine this has to has to happen I, and i i and, and back there i have a space for it i have a space back in the wood yard that i'm ready to stack and cover it it's just a matter of doing it but i wanted to get that cedar out of the way because it was in my driveway so, anyway, 
I appreciate your viewership. Thank you for tuning in. I um, hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you, ha if you have any questions, comments, ideas for episodes, let me know down in, in the comments below. Um, until next time, uh, stay safe, a keep cutting, and enjoy life as an act, addict, as a firewood addict. Uh, scream it to the top of your lungs. If you're also a firewood addict, let me know in the comments and join the club. All right, folks. Have a good day. Bye.